about the time that I need to tear down this Kanban board and get moving on stuff for quarter four and I thought I would take you along for some of the process and also walk you through my new work planning system. Hi everybody. I decided today to do this a little vlog style, not completely but a little bit, mainly because it has been a hard week. So I'm filming this the last week of Q3 for me, which is also the week where it was the 20th anniversary of my dad dying and we had to put my cat Loki to sleep. He uh, was, in kid was in kidney failure and declined really quickly over the last week and it just made sense to stop that before it he suffered anymore. So we're all very sad in managing it. So of course I'm throwing myself into work because that's how I get through shit like this. Anyway, I said in my recent quarterly goal setting video that I am moving all of my work stuff to a different planning system, a different goal setting system, blah, blah, blah. I'll link that up above. Today I'm gonna walk you through that and I'm gonna reset my Kanban board for the next three months. I'm not gonna like fully fill everything out. I already did my post-its for example, but I thought I would just talk you through the whole system and just kind of go over it. It's not completely done. There's still at least one thing I'm waiting on. I've got enough going on to show you and have it be interesting. You know me, I'll continue to show shit. You shouldn't have to worry about that. So let's get started. So this is my planner. I moved my camera as high up as I can and I can only barely fit it in frame. This is letter size, so it's pretty fucking massive. For a comparison, this is my B5 bullet journal, which is already big. <laughs> so this is a big old chungus here. And the reason it's so big, the reason I want it big was twofold. One, I like having room to write and to like make notes and scribble. And this is very much a working scribbly kind of planner. So that's a big thing. And two, everything in here is printables. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to do any weird printing or paper cutting because <laughs> I'm lazy. This cover is absolutely stunning. It is from Notique. It is their Letra size. And it's Stone Saffiano, I think is what it is. It's the ringless planner because I'm doing discs. I know, I know, but it just, it works better for me. And I was able to snag a punch secondhand. So I was able to save a little bit of money there. And the only happy planner item in this whole planner is the discs because those happen to be the ones that I have. And I'm not going to replace them because it really doesn't fucking matter that much. But this is beautiful and I love how fancy it looks on my desk. And what you're going to see here is the light shining off of it. But this is just the little thing they send with their, it's like their little, I haven't had a chance to look through it yet. So I'm keeping it in here. I just have some various post-it notes here. I'm not doing this for the cuteness. I'm mostly doing this. So I have the post-it notes for this, which is my inbox. So this is a divider that I created by buying this paper from Michael's and then laminating it. And then I punched it. And then I used my little old timey label maker to put inbox and that way I can put like post-it notes with things to remember on it or whatever and that way at the end of the day I can take whatever I put here that's left and move it into its appropriate place in my planner. Like I said these are happy planner discs. They are I think the two inch size question mark. I don't fucking know you guys. I don't know. So the dividers that I have for this planner are clear and I got them from Notik as well. I looked at cloth and papers dividers, but they don't have the letter size, at least that I saw. So these are the letter size. They're clear. They're very like soft kind of flexible plastic, but it, it feels different than laminate. It's got more of a matte flavor to it. And I put categories on them again, using my old timey label makers. This front is vision. And then right here is my vision board. I did this for the HB90 program. I did the boot camp this past month. If you would like a review on that, I can totally give one. But for now, we're just gonna talk about this planner. I made this in Canva and then I just printed it out and I actually have it as a background on my computer as well. And then before I had done that, I had cut out some just pretty scrapbook papers to have underneath, whoops. See the one problem I'm running into, this is the only thing that is not staying in well with the discs is this inbox. Everything else is staying in well, but maybe it's cause it's on top, maybe it's cause it's the flimsy or laminate, I don't fucking know. I may wind up just buying a dashboard for like the front of the planner at some point, but right now I just decided to make it myself. Anyway, before I made that vision board, I cut out pieces of scrapbook paper in the size, like letter size, and then put them behind the dividers to make them pretty. But then I decided to put the vision board in, but I left it in because why the fuck not? 
So this front section is the vision like casting section, which is why my vision board is there for the next quarter and for in general for work. And what I have in here is both some of the vision stuff from the HB90 planner. And I'll link that video up above because I did do a planner review of it when I printed it, but I also did the boot camp with her, which is a week long thing that she does once a quarter. Heart Breathings, by the way, is the name of the channel. And so this has the workbook from that as well. So that's all of this for reference when I need to and so on and so forth. So it's both visioning and also figuring out what is gonna to need to be done the next quarter. And so that also includes this planning section, which got really like, oh, high marked up over the course of the uh, entire boot camp. And I still am gonna transfer some of this stuff to a couple other places. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to though. And so I've got recurring tasks and then an ideal schedule, blah, blah, blah. All that's been done and that's up here and I'm keeping it in the planner because I'm going to be coming back to reference it throughout the quarter. The next section is the goals section and this all comes from the HB90 system. Like I said, scrapbook paper. And so all of it is the goal setting stuff from the HB90 planner that I worked through during the boot camp. And then it also has all of the projects I'm going to be doing for the different goals. So I have three goals set for the next quarter. Before I talk about them, I want to mention that my approach this time around is a little bit different. Last time when I set up the Kanban board, I'll leave that linked up above. I set it up for the last six months or so, last six weeks of the quarter. And I had the specific things I was working on, the rebrand, the finishing the fuckery flowers and relaunching the podcast. But because I went through the HB90 boot camp and I'm really trying to follow her system for the quarter, I wanted to set my goals not only around these some specific things, but like the overall picture of work. This time when I set up the Kanban board, there's gonna be a lot more post-it notes because I'm gonna be including everything. The first goal is to develop, publish, and promote quality content in order to grow my following by, and then I've got three milestones, good, better, and best. I haven't put any numbers in yet because I'm waiting for the start of the quarter to get the starting points. This is going to include all of my content, podcast, YouTube, Patreon, everything. The only thing I haven't done sticky notes for is Patreon yet, mainly because it's sort of like a weekly admin task and I have those accounted for already in like my time for work. So I didn't think it was necessary. I still haven't decided yet. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, all of my YouTube videos, everything else is going to appear on this Kanban board, at least in some form or another for that aspect of my work. The second goal has to do with my freelance and art work. So to expand it, freelance and retail art work and sales to increase my art income by good, better, best. Okay. And so we're talking here about getting the shop reopened with the fuckery flowers, doing the freelance work that I do and working on some stuff so that I can be, I'm not really ready to begin pitching art directors yet for licensing, but I want my a lot of my stuff that I would like to have out in the world for licensing to be ready to go, or at least some of it ready to go. So anyway, but the big focus is going to be um, a few big freelance projects that I have coming up as well as getting the Etsy shop reopened. And then the third goal is meant to be, so these are two like really constructive like work goals, one focused on income, one focused on reach. This third goal is focused on process and that is to work within my allotted hours on good, better, best percent of my designated work days. Now, I've already gone through as part of this process and figured out what those designated work days are. And I need, and I have some extra time built in for days when I'm not feeling good or for days I have to take like major rest time. But the key here is that I am working way too much. And if you saw my Power Sheets video that went up, which I'll link up above, boundaries is a big thing for me. And one of those big boundaries is going to be setting boundaries around when I work and how much I work, because right now I'm working way too much. And I need to get a little bit less, I gotta like retrieve some of my time for my family, especially during the holidays. So my goal is to set those hours and then see how many days I can work within those goals. And so then, and this is like the future projects, I'm to like jot things down throughout the quarter. Again, remember I was saying if stuff comes up that is not gonna fit into this quarter to make a note of it, right? And so then this section is the project brainstorming section where you break down 
all of the projects to get you, like decide what projects to use and then get you to those goals. So I did all of that. And then this is the project planner. And so these are all of the projects I'm doing this quarter and I had already gone through and made all the post-it notes for them. As you can see, there's a lot of post-it notes. So I've got pink for all of my content related goal stuff, green, well, kind of yellow green for all of my freelance art work related stuff. And then this teal color is both for the work hours goal, but also um, some other things that just need to be added to the list. There are administrative type stuff that need to go on there as well. And so that's the goal setting planner. I'm gonna come back to this to set my Kanban up in a minute. Then I've got just some note pages back here that they're tool note pages. I got a pack of like color, they're different like pastel color note pages. I added some to this so I would have some space in case I need to jot things down. And then we get into the Q4 planning section. So this was all the goal setting for Q4. This is to actually execute on all of this shit. So this is actually a section where I am waiting for one product to still show up. I found an Etsy shop that does top tabs that are also clear because they didn't have them at Notique. And I looked at cloth and paper, but again, they only had, they didn't have, they didn't have letter size. Those have not shown up yet, but I am definitely going to be putting two of them in this section, one for monthly and one for weekly. So we go into this, I've got some milestones, like when some of these projects are supposed to be finished. Here is a perpetual calendar to write things down as they come up. Um, this I'm going to use for content tracking. I haven't actually put them in the right spots yet. These are gonna go in the um, monthly sections, but I haven't done that yet. But these are from Lights Planner Action. I got this idea from Julie's Plans. She has these in her planner and I actually use Notion, which I'm not gonna show you in this video. I know I keep talking about doing a video on that, but I'm just not ready to yet, you guys. It's, it's fucking, it's a lot. And it's not only a lot, but it's a lot to figure out how to do a video on. So I will talk about though. But this is just a kind of an overview for that. Uh, Best didn't have letter size, so I just got the classic happy planner size and just printed it and I just left the little hash marks on it for like, you know, where you cut it. But I'll probably put some washi tape on there once I get it set up. I just haven't set it up yet. I just printed three for now and some information. And so I did not put the entire HB90 planner in here. There are some weekly things I'm using. I'll show you those. She has weekly and daily planning pages. I'm not using any of those. My planning, like once I decide what's gonna happen for the week, all of that's gonna get put into my bullet journal or my weekly planner, like my regular planners. That's fine. This is where I figure out what I'm doing and analyze what I did. When it comes to the weekly, I'm not gonna have a separate work daily plan or weekly plan. I'm going to have it all together because that's the way I like things. But this is gonna be where I decide what each week's priorities are. I hope that makes sense. So what I have in this monthly section is the monthly calendar for November, December, October, November, and December. And she has them labeled by weeks. She starts it either on the first of the month, which is not what she does personally, or on the first Monday. So it would actually be September 27th, which is what I'm gonna do. Week one, all the way through to week 13 in December. There's also a monthly review. So a bunch of questions and prompts to go over each month and figure out how things went. So how I'm gonna use this is I am going to take those projects and the Kanbans and I'm gonna try and map out when I wanna get stuff done. Now it's gonna change from week to week based on how much I finish, but I'd like to go in at the start of the month and say, okay, I, my milestones has, I want these projects finished by the end of October, so how am I gonna do that? And I'll make sure to use a highlighter or something to cross off, like maybe I'll just do that right now. So grab a mild liner and I'm gonna do it right now and I'm going to cross off what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and put in all of the hours. I wanna go ahead of time and like plan out how many hours I want to work each day. And that also might change depending on, God damn it, I keep yanking them out and none of them are the ones I want. There it is, the gray one. Um, I wanna be able to say, okay, these are the days I'm not working, right? Or these, this is how many hours per day I'm gonna work. But I already know which days I don't wanna work. I don't wanna work on Saturdays at all. So I'm gonna cross that off. And then this week, my kids are gonna be out of town. So I'm taking the 17th off, which is the day they fly out of town. So there won't be a live stream that day. And the 22nd and the 18th, Jesse is taking off that week and I'm gonna take them off with him so we can spend some time together. 
So those are days I know for sure I'm taking off. Now there's probably more, but I'm gonna put that in. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna write down how many hours I want to work each day. And then I'm going to put in all of the projects that need to get done each week. And that way it gives me, like I'm basically going ahead of time and figuring out how I'm gonna use my time for the month. Now to do the, one of my goals for, one of my projects for October is to be, make a spreadsheet, to track my hours, basically so it can be easy to discover like percentage of hours worked or whatever, right? Using the, the stuff, I'm gonna do it in Google Sheets. But this is gonna be sort of the physical planning section. And I'm gonna do that every month. And then like I said, there's a monthly review as well. Now, after the monthly review for December, so there's gonna be a top tab here, and there's gonna be a top tab here for weekly. And like I said, I'm not gonna use the weekly, the weekly planning pages, the ones with like the weekly spread, but I am going to use the week, these pieces of the weekly planning. So this side is the task side to brainstorm which tasks need to be done for each goal each week. Okay, and then once you've brainstormed them here, you can go ahead and move your Kanban post-it notes. Uh, I have been doing them the way Sarah Cannon does them, the one who does the system where she puts everything into the working on category that she wants to do that week. Some people do it as they start working on them. Some people do it daily, whatever. But here's where I'm gonna brainstorm which tasks need to get done this week to stay on top of my monthly plan. And then this side is the weekly review, which you do when you're planning the next week. So I've got a weekly review and a task sheet for every single week for this quarter. So 13 total weeks. And that is the end of the Q4 planning section and the end of the HB90 stuff that I have in this planner. Like I said, there's still daily pages and weekly pages that I can print if I decide I want to use them, but this is everything I'm using right now. All right, so now we're gonna get into the next year planning section. It's the Maker's Yearbook. And I actually got one of these a couple years ago that I was going to do a review on, but by the time I got it, it was already sold out. I could do a review on this if you want. I bought the PDF instead of the physical version so I could again print it and also it was less expensive. But again, I'm not using the weekly planning pages. I'm using the monthly, the yearly and the yearly stuff. And then I may go in and put in the monthly stuff into the monthly review as well. This is mainly built around product-based businesses. So I'm interested in it mainly for Etsy shop planning. But here is sort of the stuff for that. So this is the 2021 section. And what this is, is a whole bunch of stuff that is meant to help you um, review your 2021. So all sorts of things for 2021, right? Like highs and lows, sales and profits, what worked, what didn't work customers and followers, product range, shops and galleries, craft fairs and art markets. Some of this may apply, some of this may not. And then a review overall. And then some notes pages from that same notes pack. So this is all 2021 in review stuff. There may be other stuff that winds up coming into here. If I have some other courses I've taken and things like that that also do yearly reviews, that may wind up in here as well. And a lot of these note pages may come out because it's already pretty fucking girthy. But when I start planning for next year, this is gonna be sort of the starting point. And then we have 2022, and this section has a whole bunch of stuff on how to plan out your year for growth. So we've got a bunch of information here, a bunch of strategy and like examples, dreams for 2022, why do I want this? What are the next steps to get there? And then we have, um, what do we want, like more vision stuff customer growth strategy. This is where, like I said, remember I have like a bunch of wishy-washy ways of setting goals, but I need some like concrete shit. This is going to also help with that. Um, customer growth strategy is a bunch of stuff. And then sales growth strategy, a bunch more prompts and stuff. And then key goals for the year, audience growth or sales growth another place to write them out and then some notes and then how to, and then a year to plan it out. And again, I'm planning on sticking with the HB 90 system, which is a quarterly system as opposed to a yearly, but I want this to be at least a jumping off point so that when I come to the work for each quarter, I've already done some thinking. So I don't feel like I'm overloading myself at any given time. And then there's project trackers for sales and customer growth for the whole year. So this is like an overview section, whereas the HB90 stuff is a quarterly section. 
And then I just got some like notes in here for ideas. I've got a current page started for like potential fuckery flower series in the future, stuff like that. Now this last section, I'm not sure how I'm going to use it yet. I have it marked, oh hi Mark, with dollar signs, but I don't think it's going to be work budgeting. I do all that in QuickBooks and in a Google Sheet. So I don't know. This may just be like an ideas section. I haven't figured it out yet, but for now it has a grid set of note pages that I got from Tool as well. And I'm just gonna leave this here until I potentially need a new section or need to yank out some of these note pages because I've got other stuff to put in. And then I haven't even fucked with the back here because like I don't fucking care. I just wanted the cover because it's pretty and I wanted something that closed up and felt really uh, fancy. All right, so that is my new work planning system. This combined with the Kanban board to help me keep track visually of everything that's going on. And then I've got Notion to help. Like a lot of the stuff I have here is like for October, I have like this week is gonna be the week I do all this filming. So I need to do all the filming and then I do all the other filming and then I need to do this, that. So it's a big overview in Notion is where I'm gonna put in all of my video descriptions and all of my info for planner reviews and to keep track of where each video is in the process because I didn't wanna write post-its for every single one. So that is kind of how I'm using Notion. Notion is sort of like all of the things that I can like copy and paste and copy and paste and stuff like that. So anyway, now that I've shown you this work planner system and kind of explained how I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna set my Kanban board up and so then you can have an idea of kind of how I hope this system is gonna work. And I'm giving this the quarter, we'll see how it goes. So as you can see here, based on what I got done, I finished almost everything. There were a few things I removed from the Kanban board that I decided to move to this quarter. For example, with my fuckery flowers, I got them all done, I got them all scanned, but the I didn't get to the formatting of them, so that is in my post-its for this next quarter. For the most part, I got almost everything finished. So this time around, I'm organizing things slightly differently, both to account for the fact that there's a hell of a lot more post-its because it's a full quarter and a hell of a lot more post-its because of how I am putting everything on here as opposed to just a few projects. I have them organized basically into project stacks and then for some of these things like creating YouTube videos or podcasts or whatnot, into like months, like all of my stuff for October is in its own little stacks and then all of my stuff for November is in its own little stacks when it comes to creating YouTube videos, as an example. When it comes to like the artwork stuff, it's organized based on like overall project, like everything having to do with fuckery flowers or reopening the Etsy shop is kind of grouped into one. Everything that has to do with like getting my portfolio finalized is grouped into another. Stuff for Kristen, grouped into another. You see what I'm saying? Like all of those things are sort of grouped so that when I start working on a project, I know where all the post-it notes are instead of just a massive unorganized pile of post-it notes that I have to sort of decipher. I wanted them to be stacked in such a way where I could easily see kind of where I am. Like I, I know what order to do things in. The biggest thing I'm worried about is whether or not they're going to stay stuck. I started by putting them on individually in like a little stack but then I decided since they were in the correct order anyway, that I would just start slapping them on there in the stacks that I created when I was writing the post-its, but those were not the most neatly organized, nor is there sticky from every single post-it note getting access to the board. This seems silly, but I'm going to make sure my trash can is not directly under it because that's where I like threw all of my other post-it notes away so that they could be recycled. And I just don't want them to fall off of me to think that they got done and then miss like an entire section of something that I needed to do. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there's in a post-it note up here for every single video I'm doing in the month of October because I, A, don't know every single video I'm doing in the month of October, and B, that would be way more than I wanted. But instead, because I do work in sort of chunks of time and batches of time, I can say like for this week where I plan to do filming, film everything that's my face and film everything that's my hands, and those could be their own post-it notes. And then when it comes to individual videos and keeping track of all of the bits and pieces for each individual video, I have that in my notion. Like I said, I will be doing a video on that. I know I keep promising it, but it will get here eventually. I've also broken things down sort of when it comes to stuff like tracking, working the right number of hours every day. 
I'm following an idea that Sarah gave in her HB90 program, and that is if you're doing like a tracking goal or something, you could have a post-it for every single day of the quarter. I did not want to do that, but I did it for the week. So every week I'll be entering in my hours worked on my spreadsheet, and I will just be keeping an eye on them based on like I'll write it in my planner or maybe I'll put it in my Google Calendar. I haven't quite decided what's going to work best for me yet, but it might actually go in the... uh, in the monthly of my bullet journal because, well, that's been my kind of tracking place of choice recently and it's been working pretty well. And I actually have two blank dots on there because I had set it up before we knew that Loki was going to decline as fast as he did. And so I whited that out so I wouldn't be heartbroken every time I looked at it. But I have two dots that have nothing on them. And that might be a good spot to just dot in there and then right next to it the like the estimated hours I wanted to work and then the actual hours or maybe just the actual hours. I'm not sure yet. I guess I'll figure it out and then report back when I set up my bullet journal for November. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's something that I'm still working through how I'm going to track certain things. And you can see here, the number of post-its that I'm putting on this Kanban are getting really intense, but I like that because if I can look at a picture of this that I took as I am working my way through, I can see where I started and then see the progress I've made. I mean, you'll see the progress you've made as you move your post-it notes around in general, but like when everything's sort of spread out, like some on the bottom, some in the middle, some on the top, it's not quite as easy to remember like the massive, like choking a chicken amount of post-it notes that were on the Kanban board in the first place. This is the first time I'm doing like this full blown, like quarter following the HB90 planner system. I've used a Kanban board before, but both times that I've really used it to like full blown success, it's just been with a few specific projects. This time it's more than that. And so I'm really curious to see how it turns out. And I promise at the end of this quarter, I will do a review of the whole system and how it worked for me and whether I plan to continue with it. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below your thoughts on this system, any questions you have or ideas you have, things that might have worked for you. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, my friends, stay safe and peace out.